Hi everyone, right, well it's product review time. I have been contacted by the lovely people at uh, Seika um, who've sent me one of their chamfer planes uh, for all the purposes of review. Um, just to be clear on that, they are not paying me to make this video but they have provided the product uh, free of charge. Will that do them any favours? Let's see. So what do you get with the Seika chamfer plane? You get a branded carry case, you get the plane itself and you get a box of assorted uh, blades. So as a first impression, looking at the unit itself, it's it's quite a nice material, it's uh, it's well coated, it's, um, it's fairly comfortable to hold um, in the hand as well, um, so it feels quite well made. So let's have a quick look at the blades as well. You get 45 degree blade, you get three different curve profile, kind of double rounded effect there. You've got this one, which they call a double fillet. You can see you've got two grooves there, which are going in at quite different heights. Right, so one observation I would make about these is they're not very sharp. That is about as sharp as a toddler's yogurt spoon. I mean, I'm pushing that quite hard into my hand with no fear. Um, yeah, look, just to prove, I'm not bleeding, right? This particular one uh, is probably a bad example because this would be quite easy to sharpen. Um, we've got two nice flat edges, but um, you know, if we go back to one of these, um, I think really you're gonna be restricted to just polishing this edge here in order to, to um, get it sharper. Um, I'm not about to, to try getting something in there to polish these surfaces as well. Um, quite honestly, I think you can forget about that. So the blades themselves are really easy to install actually. Um, you just uh, pop it into the unit like this and then turn the little wheel, which drives the blade in. Uh, this wheel also acts as your uh, depth adjustment. One feature on here which is quite nice is they've actually, I don't know if you can see on the camera there, but they have laser etched a scale along the side here so that um, as you put that blade in and out, these uh, marks will line up and you can actually get an idea of, of how deep um, that's gonna be. So that's quite a nice little feature. Um, could have been a bit bolder, a bit easier to see, um, but at least it's there. Appearance wise, um, if you've looked at chamfer plane, planes before, you um, will not fail to notice that this is almost identical in design uh, to a product made by a particular American company. Apart from the color, this is black. Um, they make all of theirs in uh, a distinctive red color. I'm sure you know who I'm talking about. Um, and they charge a lot of money for them. In fact, uh, the equivalent product um, went for well over $200, I believe. Um, by comparison, this is about 35 UK pounds on, uh, on Amazon. So this is made in China. Um, and as such, there are um, a number of quirks that you get um, sometimes with, with Chinese products. In particular, there are um, several spelling mistakes, um, both on the box and um, in the instruction manual. Um, and uh, one that's quite amusing here is the set contains, according to this, seven teal cutters. Um, I presume they mean steel. Um, this seems like it's made of steel. Teal, for anyone that doesn't know, is a product that is derived from sesame seeds. Um, pretty sure that ain't made from sesame seeds. They have also managed to spell the word plain incorrectly um, a number of times uh, throughout the literature, uh, which is interesting. And the last thing I'll say about that, because I'm not going to pick the whole thing apart because it would, it would be kind of unfair. Um, on the very week that we've had International Women's Day, um, I notice on this packaging they have written it is suitable for woodworking beginners and professionals. It can also be used as a men's holiday gift. It would be remiss of me not to um, pull you up on that Seika. Uh, women do woodwork too, you know. Um, just saying. Yeah, so like I said, I'm not going to pull apart all the mistakes on the um, uh, on the packaging. Let's let's focus on the product, but. I would just make the point that if I was attempting to write um, some instructions or some marketing literature in Mandarin, 
I would definitely get it proofread by a native speaker. Um, it can't be that difficult. Um, in fact, Seika, if you're looking for somebody to proofread your artwork and your instruction manuals, give me a call, maybe we can do a deal. So let's have a look at how the product actually works. So I've installed in here uh, one of the curved profile blades and uh, I'm just gonna set that to a relatively shallow depth of uh, about a millimeter. And you just do up this, uh, sorry, this little retaining screw here to hold it in firmly. I've um, clamped a bit of hardwood to my bench here, so I'll just reposition the camera and then we'll have a go with it, see how it does. So the feel of this is, is quite nice uh, in the hand. You've got this little rest here to, to put your finger on as well. Um, I don't know if that's what that hole is intended for, but I tend to find that I'm, I'm looping my finger into there as well to get a firm hold. The edge guide bit here is also um, it's actually a really nice feature to, to make sure you're, you're holding that at the right angle. I'm going to go a little bit deeper on that. This blade is too blunt to do anything with whatsoever. That's straight out of the box. Um, to be honest, I think somebody that buys um, a product in this price bracket is not going to be geared up for uh, sharpening. They may well not have... Uh, wet stones, oil stones, um, leather strops, polishing compound, all of that kind of stuff. So um, I think that's a problem. I'm going to try a different blade. Right, here we go. Oh, that's more like it. Right, we're getting something off there. I'm going to take that a little bit deeper. some slivers. I mean the force that you have to apply here to get any sort of cut is is not acceptable. You can see here because of the way I'm pushing this we're actually developing this horrible dig mark. How well you can see that position it right. All along all along the side there. Uh, the other thing to say is we're making a lot of horrible marks on the surface of our workpiece. So the paint is coming off and I can also feel that if you can hear that, there's a little lump there and that's actually digging a trench. Okay, so I've swapped over here for one of the uh, knobbly blades. Well, that. well, that one is actually doing something. Drop the depth a little bit more. Some nice curly little shavings over this. I know it looks like I'm being really ham-fisted here. I, I do know how to use a plane, I promise. Um, it's, this is so damn blunt um, that the, the force I'm having to apply to put this through the cut is, is really something else. All right, more shavings. We've got something going on there. It's um, and it's not a particularly attractive edge shape. Um, neither is it particularly smooth, but it, it has cut. Um, I mean, I was planning to do the um, uh, the long grain here first, and then have a go um, across the grain. But uh, look at that one, forty-five degree one. 
although this is the one I already did uh, point out was particularly blunt. So, see how we're going with that. Let's go across the grain. Be bold, see what happens. Oh, that went better than I was expecting. Let's go a bit deeper. Hmm. Well, it has cut a bit of a chamfer, but you can see along here, it's not particularly even. Now, I'm sure that must be because of the way that I've um, had to really force and tilt the blade as it goes through there. I mean, to me, a plane has got two parts, the bit you hold and the bit that cuts. Um, and it's just, the bit you hold is all right. The bit that cuts is, it doesn't cut. It does not cut. So it does say in the instructions that, um, you know, you should need to grind and, and sharpen these. I would expect to be able to take it out of the box and at least do something with it. Um, because otherwise the product on its own is not very helpful unless you actually own a sharpening stone. Um, which I do, but do I really want to spend time sharpening these blades? So, would I spend 35 quid on one? Um, no. Would I spend 200 plus dollars on one if it was red and possibly of better quality? Hell no. Uh, I'm really sorry, Seika, and I, I appreciate you sending me this. It's really kind. Um, I just don't think it's any good. I really wanted to be able to say that this was good. Um, unfortunately, it's not. I'm gonna have to sharpen this and try it properly because uh, I think otherwise I'm not, I'm not reviewing the product properly. I, honestly, I find it really disappointing that it comes, it comes like this in the packet. Um, it's basically unusable. Yeah, I'm gonna pause the video. I'm gonna sharpen and polish just this one. I'm not doing them all. I'm gonna sharpen and polish this one um, it's going to have to be the bottom side only because I'm not, I'm not getting in there um, and uh, we'll see if that makes any difference. Right, so I've just given the back of this a damn good polish. You should be able to see that that's nice and shiny now. And we'll another go. We'll do the softwood, then we'll try the hardwood. Come with the camera again. Newly polished blade and a new piece of wood. See what we get. Well, it seems better, a little, um, deeper, and another pass. Yeah, I think the, the performance of this is, is definitely improved since sharpening. Down to about four mil now. Oh, we're actually starting to get some quite nice, decent shavings off that. So we are still getting the transference of the paint onto the work, uh, which is not ideal, but you can see there, the round over it's done is fairly reasonable. Let's go back to our bit of hardwood. Despite bending time, oh Christ, sharpening this, it still doesn't want to cut. I mean, we are only at two millimetres. Now, I should just remind you, this is end grain, but 
in my experience, when you need to edge something, you don't only edge the long grain, you want to edge the, uh, the end grain as well. So um, a plane, an, a chamfering plane that can only do long edges, um, it's not going to cut it for me. So where are we now? We're down to about three and a half mil. And what I want to feel is one complete reasonable pass, but it ain't doing it. Right, so just cut a fresh edge on here. Uh, we are now back to um, long grain, edge grain, rather than uh, end grain. So we'll see if it, uh, if it works any better on that. It's going better. Right, so we are actually getting a bit of a round over there. But if you can see, I'll show you from the top, again, you're getting this transparency of the paint, and we've also got this unevenness in the way that it goes through the cut. And the reason it's doing that is because you're having to apply so much pressure to start the cut that um, it's, it's distorting the angle as you go in. I don't know, man. I mean, I've, I've spent time polishing it. Um, it's kind of disappointing, I'm afraid, but um, there we are. I don't know on a practical level, what, what I can really use this for. Edging tends to be one of the things that is, is, is a finishing touch on something that you've already spent many hours cutting the joints, sanding, preparing, flattening, getting everything just so. Um, and for me, I want to feel 100% confident that the tool I take to do that edge um, is going to do what I want it to do and it's not going to cause me further problems down the line um, and this is is not that tool um, it, it really isn't there's good aspects about this design it does feel nice it's got a good weight to it the blade changing is easy the graduations are on there it's it, it's sort of like 80% there as a good product um, I mean Saker offer no advice whatsoever with regards sharpening this uh, other than in the instructions to say um, sharpening and grinding is necessary. Um, you're damn right it's necessary, so do it in the factory um, before you send it to people, because people are going to take this out of the box, they're going to use it, and they're going to be unimpressed. Um, yeah, I'm... I'm unimpressed. Well, look, as a final note, I think... the. I've got to edit this video and put it together anyway, and that there may be a little it's sort of add-on. So, you know, if the continuity changes, then that will be why. Because I'm I'm going to contact Saker and I'm going to I'm going to tell them the experience that I've had with this. Um, I mean, to be honest, I, I don't want to put out a video that's a, ostensibly a a negative review because you know the guys were kind enough to contact me and and, and send me this thing. <laughs> I feel like I need to at least offer a benefit of a doubt. Um, and at least give Seika the, the opportunity to uh, provide some better feedback on, on just exactly how you should sharpen this or, or how you should be doing this. Yeah. Okay, well, aside from that um, rather disappointing conclusion, I, um, I hope this has been of interest. Um, I'm sure it's not gone exactly how Seika wanted it to go. So, yeah, until um, next time. Thank you for joining me and um, I will see you again.